Secret Seven Adventure by Enid Blyton. The Secret Seven was having its usual weekly meeting in the old shed at the bottom of the garden belonging to Peter and Janet. They were in the shed waiting. On a plate lay seven ginger biscuits. There was also one big dog biscuit for Scamper, their golden spaniel. Here come the others. Yes, Colin, George, Barbara, Pam and Jack. And you and I make the seven. <coughs> Sorry, Scamper, but you're not a member. Password! Rabbits! Come in, Colin. Rabbits! And you, Jack. But where's your badge? Sorry, I think Susie's got it. She's a pest. You'll have to get it back from that sister of yours. You must hide it so that Susie can't get it. Everyone's come in now, Peter. Right, Janet. Now, has anyone anything exciting to report? No. This is the fourth week we've had nothing to report. I don't see much point in having a secret society if we don't have some mystery to solve or have an adventure. Well, think one up, Barbara. Can't we make up some kind of adventure? I mean, couldn't we dress up as Red Indians or something and go somewhere and stalk people without their knowing it? Janet and I have got American Indian clothes. Hands up, everyone, who's got some. Mm, that's everyone except Colin. I know what we'll do, then. We'll split into two parties, one at each end of the thicket, and we'll see which party can stalk and catch Colin. Good idea, George. We'll meet here at half past two. Password? Rabbits! It's Susie! I'm a member. I know the password and I've got the badge. She's running off. Catch her, Jack! I will. But now we need a new password. Oh, yes. Let's make it Indians. At half past two, the Secret Seven Society set off for Little Thicket. It lay beside a big mansion called Milton Manor which had high walls all round it. Little Thicket was certainly the right kind of place for playing Red Indians. It was a mixture of heather and bushes and big trees. When they got there, Peter gave the signal. The Indians covered their eyes and began to count to 100. Colin ran to a tree and climbed up quickly into the thick branches. When the counting was up, six red Indians began to spread out and worm their way silently through the undergrowth. Colin could see some of them and kept chuckling to himself. They'll never find me up here. Hello, what's that man doing? Climbing over the wall of Milton Manor. Now where's he gone? He must have jumped down. Oh no! There's Peter. He's crawling straight towards where the man was. Peter must have seen him. Peter, what is it? Why are you showing yourself? There was a man under one of the bushes. He got up and shot away. Anyone see where he went? I haven't seen him at all. Fancy. Six of us hidden in the thicket and not one of us saw the man run off. Well, the game's finished for this afternoon. We'll call Colin. Colin? Come out! The game's over! Where are you? Colin! 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 Colin. 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 Don't be funny, Colin! We want to go! He must have escaped us and gone home. Well, we'll go too. We can't find the man, and I don't know I want to, either. He looked a nasty bit of work to me. Colin didn't show himself for a very good reason. He was much too frightened. 
The man had climbed the same tree that Colin was in and was sitting on the branch just beneath him. In despair, Colin watched his friends leave Little Thicket. The man saw them go too. He gave a little grunt and slid down the tree, then made his way out of the thicket. Colin had been unable to see anything of him except the top of his head. He slid down the tree and ran at top speed to the Secret Seven Shed. Indians! And now everybody in the district knows our latest password. Wherever have you been? We yelled and yelled for you. I heard you. I'm sorry I shouted out the password, but I've got some news. What? When Peter shouted out that he'd found a man hiding, I was up a tree. The man Peter found climbed it too. I'd already seen him on top of the wall that surrounds Milton Manor. What happened in the end? After you'd all gone, he slid down the tree and went. I slid down too and ran for home. What was he like? I only saw the top of his head. He had a bald patch. Did you see him closely, Peter? Fairly, but he wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Clean-shaven and dark-haired. Well, I suppose that's the last we'll hear of him. When's our next meeting? We'll meet on Wednesday evening. What about a new password? We'll have, um, adventure, seeing as we've just missed one. They all went their several ways home, and nobody thought much more of the peculiar man at Little Thicket. But the news on the local radio that evening made all the Secret Seven think of him again. Lady Lucy Thomas's magnificent and unique pearl necklace was stolen from her bedroom at Milton Manor this afternoon. Nobody saw the thief. Peter and Janet sprang up at once. It was the man they had seen. They must have a Secret Seven meeting. The messages to everyone were passed round that evening, and at 9.30 next morning, the Society met. What's this important meeting about, Peter? You know the man Colin saw yesterday climbing over Milton Manor Wall? Yes. Well, it said on the radio last night that a thief stole Lady Lucy Thomas's pearl necklace yesterday. Gracious! And that was the man you and Colin saw? Must have been. The thing is... What can we do about it? Oughtn't we to tell the police? I suppose so. Not that we can help them much. Let's all go down to the police station now. Right, come on. Hello. The Secret Seven again. What brings you in here? Good morning, Inspector. We came to say we saw the thief climb over the wall of Milton Manor yesterday. Did you indeed? Can you describe him? A bit scruffy, dark hair and clean shaven. It beats me how he climbed that enormous wall. No ladder was used. He must climb like a cat. Is there anything we can do to help? Uh, nothing much, I'm afraid. Except keep your eyes open in case you see him again. We're thinking of going back to where Colin saw him get over the wall. See if we can find anything. Well, let me know if you do. The seven made their way to Little Thicket, and Colin pointed to a holly tree beside the wall. He was sure that was where he had seen the man get over. The seven stood and gazed up at the wall. It was at least ten or eleven feet high. How could anyone climb a sheer wall like that without even a ladder? They searched around for clues, and Pam found a deep mark in the ground where the man must have landed. But they couldn't make out what it was. Peter knew the gardener at Milton Manor, and decided that he would go and ask him if they could have a look inside the wall. He was working in the front garden, and Peter gave him a shout. Hey, John! Could we come in and look around? We saw the thief climb over the wall, and the police inspector has asked us to keep our eyes open. Aye, oh, if I come with you. Thanks. Where's the spot? Just here. You can see the top of the holly tree. Hmm. No footprints. Oh. What are these round marks? Funny, aren't they? Round and regular, about three inches across. 
one could have made these, John. Beats me. He must have been an acrobat. Oh, look! What's that? Caught on that sharp bit of brick halfway up the wall. Help me up, George. I'll get it. Right. Heave up. <clears throat> Got it. It's just a bit of blue wool thread with a red strand in it. I suppose it might have been pulled out of the thief's pullover. <coughs> What's up, Scamper? <coughs> He's looking up at that tree. <coughs> Look at that. A cap. It's too high to reach. I'll knock it down with one of these long canes. Ah, what a tatty old cap. I'm sure some tramp had finished with it and threw it over the wall. We'd better keep it. That check pattern might be a clue. You can carry it then. I will. And this bit of wool too. I think we should measure these marks in the ground. I've got a bit of string. Let me stretch it across one of them. There. Cut it, Peter. Good. Thanks, George. I still say only an acrobat could have scaled that high wall. Well, I've seen a poster advertising a circus. Lion tamers, clowns, acrobats, and so on. Supposing. Just supposing. Peter looked at his watch. It was nearly dinner time. They all had to get home as fast as they could. Peter suggested they meet again at half past two, but Pam and Barbara were going to a party and George couldn't make it either. In the end, it was decided they would meet at half past nine the next day. And when they did, everyone seemed to have exactly the same idea. I think we should visit the circus. That's just what Pam and I thought, George. I thought so too. Don't you think so, Peter? Yes, Colin. The circus opens this afternoon. What about us all going to see it? I don't know if I would recognise any of the acrobats as a thief, but it's worth trying. That afternoon, the seven were sitting in their seats, looking down intently on the sawdust-strewn ring. The band struck up a lively tune. The children sat up thrilled. In came the horses, the clowns and the stilt walkers. In came all the performers, greeting the audience with smiles. Peter looked at his programme and saw that the acrobats would be near the end, just before the lions. Now for the acrobats. Watch, Colin, watch. They all have moustaches, except one. Let's watch him carefully and see if he could really leap a high wall. He's easily the best of them all. Look at the way he goes up the ladder to the tightrope. He's hardly touching the rungs. I'm sure he's the thief. Me too. Now here come the bears. Oh, look at that baby one, Pam. Hugging the trainer's legs. Isn't he sweet? He's gorgeous. Now they're bringing in the lion's cage. I don't like this. Lions aren't meant to perform tricks. It just makes them look silly. Well, that's the end, I'm afraid. It's been a wonderful circus. If only we could hunt the thieves in circuses every time. It would be great. Peter, what do you think? Is that dark-haired, clean-shaven acrobat the thief? Yes. All the others have moustaches. Let's go and see if we can find him and have a chat. He might let something slip. But what excuse can we give for going to find him? To ask for his autograph. He'll think that quite natural. That's a brainwave, Peter. Look, isn't that him over there, talking to the bear trainer? Yes, come on. You go first, Peter. Hello, what do you want? Your autograph, please. Sure. But just let me take my wig off first. It was so hot in the tent. And to the children's enormous surprise, he took off his wig, and under it, he was completely bald. The seven stared at him in dismay. He couldn't possibly be the thief. Colin took the wig in his hand, wondering if perhaps the thief had worn it when he stole the necklace. <laughs> you seem to be very interested in my wig. 
No acrobat can afford to be bald, you know. Now, I'll give each of you my autograph, then you must be off. Thank you. Oh, look. Here's the baby bear all by itself. Come here, little one. Ah, there it is. Wretched thing running off like that. Gotcha, bad boy. Oh, don't be so rough with it. He only came over to see us. <laughs> um, was he in the circus? Yes. He was one of the stilt walkers. His name's Louie. He helps with the animals. He's not very kind. He'll learn. Anyway, would you like to come and see the animals sometime? Oh, yes! Come tomorrow morning. Ask for Trinculo. That's me. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye now. He's nice. I'm glad it wasn't him. So am I. I really did think he looked like the thief, but without his wig, he doesn't, of course. The man I saw is much younger. We better not go by faces, it seems to me. We're stuck. We keep thinking we've got somewhere, and then we find we haven't. Shall we go to the circus field tomorrow? Yes. I did like that little bear. I can't come. Nor can George or I. Well, Janet, Pam, Colin and I will go. And everyone is to watch out for the blue pullover with the red thread. You never know what you'll see if you keep your eyes open. The next morning, the four of them went to the circus field. Trinculo took them to make friends with Jumbo the elephant. And then they went to find the little bear. Janet just loved him. When they reached the lion cages, the sulky youth, Louis, was in one of the cages cleaning it out and filling the water trough. Janet didn't like him, but she couldn't help thinking how brave he was. They were all sorry when it was time to go. They said goodbye to Trinculo, then wandered across the field. Somebody's been busy. Look at all that washing hanging up to dry. Yes, look at it. Can't you see what I see? What is it, Pam? Is anybody looking at us? I don't think so. Why? Let's go and look closely at that pair of blue socks. I'm sure I'm right. Colin and I will wait here. I see what you mean, Pam. The red thread pattern down the side. Just a sec. I've got the scrap of wool in my pocketbook. Do hurry, in case someone comes. It is the same. And see here, there's a little snag in the sock. Yes, I see it. Well done, Pam. Look out, you two. There's an old woman watching you. Come on, Pam, let's go. What was that about? Socks. That pair is made of exactly the same wool as the bit we found caught on the wall. I wish we'd dare to ask the old woman who they belong to. Then we'd know who the thief is. They raced back to the Secret Seven meeting shed, where they found Jack, George and Barbara in the shed waiting for them, all very excited. Peter, you know those strange marks we saw on the inside of the wall? Well, we found some exactly like them. Where? In a muddy patch near Chimney Cottage. Barbara knows what made them. One leg, William. He lives at Chimney Cottage and he's got a wooden leg. So? It leaves round marks in the mud, just like the ones we saw inside the wall. No, one leg William couldn't possibly be the thief. The thief wore a pair of socks, and that means two legs. How do you know he wore socks? Pam saw a pair of blue and red socks that matched the bit of wool we found. Well, those marks at Chimney Cottage are exactly the same too. Very well. 
Let's go and check them. When they got to Chimney Cottage, Peter checked the width of the marks with the bit of string he had used to measure the marks inside the wall. The marks at the cottage were nearly an inch smaller. It couldn't be one leg William. They all agreed there was only one thing to do. They would go back to the circus field the next day and see who was wearing the socks. At ten o'clock the next morning, all the Secret Seven were in the circus field. There's no sign of Trinculo. Hang on here. There's another one of the acrobats. I'll go and ask him if we can snoop around. He's nodding to Peter. Oh, it looks as if it'll be OK. I can see the little bear. He's fast asleep. The acrobat said, all right, as long as we don't go in the lion's cage, <laughs> some chance. Louis is in there washing the floor. In bare feet? Every man I've seen has had bare feet. Hey, look at that man painting the outside of the cage. What about him? Do you see that coat he's wearing? It's like the cap we found up in the tree. I wish I could check them. Oh, luck's in. He's taken the coat off and hung it on the handle of the cage. Have you got the cap with you, Peter? Yes, in my pocket. Look, the man's going off somewhere. I don't suppose he'll be long. Quickly, pretend you're looking into the lion's cage while I compare the cap with the coat. The man's coming back. Let's move away. OK, I've had a look. Walk away casually. Well, did they match? Yes. That man may be the thief. We'll have to watch him. No good. I saw the top of his head when he bent down to pick up his paintbrush. Dark hair, but no bald patch. He's not the thief. Oh, no. We find somebody wearing a coat that matches the cap, and the top of his head is wrong. But the cap has got something to do with the mystery. I'm sure of it. Look, over there. Those marks in that muddy part of the field. Just like the ones at the cottage. But bigger. Let me measure them with my string. Uh, mm. Yes, exactly the same size. Then there must be another one-legged man in the circus. He couldn't climb the wall, but he must have been with the thief. Janet, ask that little girl if there's a one-legged man about. Right. I won't be a tick. We must find him. If we can find who his friend is, we shall know his friend is the thief. Here's Janet back. What did the girl say? There's no one-legged man in the circus. Oh, no. Another theory gone to waste. Let's follow the marks. See where they go. They led up to that caravan near the lion's cage, next to the one where Louis is sitting. Let's have a peep inside. Hey, you lot. What do you think you're doing? Peeping and prying where you've no business to be. Clear it off. Come on. We'd better go. Hurry. What's the matter with him? Why didn't he want us to look inside that caravan? It's only used for storing things. Maybe the thief has hidden the pals in there. Do you know... You might be right. I wish we could search it and see, but I don't see how we can. Well, I do. You and I will go to the circus performance tonight, Colin. We'll slip out when all the performers are in the ring and see if the pearls are hidden in there. But surely they won't be. It seems such a silly place. I've got a sort of hunch about it. Those strange marks led there, didn't they? Marks made by a one-legged man who doesn't exist. This is a silly adventure, I think. It isn't really. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. The bits look quite odd, but as soon as you fit them together properly, they make a clear picture. Come on, let's get home. We've spent all the morning snooping about for nothing. Well, Colin and I might find something tonight. Peter and Colin met as planned. They went into the big tent and found seats near the back so they could slip out unnoticed. The show was very good. The clowns and stilled walkers and acrobats seemed better than ever. They were quite sorry to slip out before the show was over. 
It was dark in the circus field now. They made their way towards the caravan and crept inside. Very cautiously, they switched on their torches and got a dreadful shock. They were in the wrong caravan. A caravan that people lived in. Get out, quickly! Wait, someone's coming in. Quick, hide under that bunk and I'll hide under this one. Sit down, I'll light the lamp. What are you going to do? I'm clearing out tonight. I'm scared the police will come along about that last job. You're always scared. Let me know when it's safe to bring you the pearls. They can stay put for months. Sure they'll be all right? <laughs> the lions will see to that. Hitch the horse up to the caravan, will you? OK. All set. Come out and drive. See you later. Right. See you. Gee up. On you go. Hey, he's locked the door. We're prisoners. Yes, but Colin, did you notice that one of the men was wearing the socks? He's the thief. And he's the one we've left behind. Anyway, we know the pearls are somewhere in the circus. What did he mean about the lions? Goodness knows. Unless he's hidden them in the lion's cage, under a floorboard or somewhere, we'll have to escape somehow. Can we get out of a window? We can try. Hang on a sec. I'll have a look out of the front window. See if I can work out where we are. The street lights should show us. Look, the man who's driving the caravan has got the tweed coat that matches the cap we found. He's the one we saw painting the lion's cage. Yes, and probably the thief who borrowed his cap to wear. Come on, let's try the side windows. Now we're for it. He's heard us. Hide quickly, Colin. He's unlocking the door. Here, yeah, you. What are you doing under that bunk? Out you come. Ow, let me go. Leave him alone. Ah, oh, so there's two of you. How long have you been in here? Not long. We came in by mistake. We wanted to get in another van, but in the dark we missed our way. A likely story. Now I'm going to teach you a lesson. The man put his torch on a shelf and pushed back his coat sleeves. Colin suddenly kicked up at the torch, which fell to the floor with a crash, and the light went out. Colin dived for the man's legs, but in the darkness he missed them, shot out of the door, and rolled down the steps. Peter, too, dived and caught one of the man's legs. The man staggered and fell. Peter ran down the steps and hid in the hedge. At the same moment, the horse took fright and bolted down the road with the man inside the caravan, looking very surprised indeed. Colin, where are you? I'm here. Let's run. Slow down. We should be all right now. Thank goodness. Every single thing in this adventure goes wrong. Well, we know the thief is wearing those socks now, even if we don't know who he is. Funny thing is, I seem to know his voice. Have you any idea where we are? Yes, we'll soon be back at the circus field. Let's slip back in and have a look around for the man who's wearing the socks. No thanks. I've had enough adventures for one night. OK, wait for me here. Peter climbed over the fence and made his way towards the lights. On the way, he saw a girl walking towards him on stilts. He hid by a caravan, and she didn't see him. When she had passed him, Peter stared at the ground. Her stilts had left peculiar round marks, just like the ones by the wall round Milton Manor. Peter realised at once that the thief must be a stilt walker. He ran over to Colin and told him what he had discovered. As they made their way home, Peter said he would get Janet to go round first thing in the morning and call everyone for a meeting. When the seven had gathered, it was Pam who spoke first. What happened last night?
last night? Did you find the pearls? No, but we know everything else. Oh, tell us, Peter. Come up to the little thicket and I'll show you exactly how the thief got over the wall. Oh, you might tell us now. No. Come on up to the little thicket. Please, Peter. Peter. Here we are, and there's John. Hey, John, may we come in again? Hey, I'll just let this car in first. Thanks, John. Now what? The thief was a stilt walker. He got on his stilts outside and sat on the top of the wall. He drew his stilts over and used them to get down. Go on. He got into the house, stole the pearls, and then got back over the wall the way he got in, leaving more of these peculiar round marks. So that's what they were. Yes, and as he clambered onto the wall, his cap got caught in a branch of the tree and was jerked off. And he couldn't afford to waste time getting it back. Right, and as we know, he caught his sock on a sharp bit of wall. But what did he do with his stilts? I think he must have thrown them into a thick bush somewhere to hide them. Yes, but which bush? A prickly holly bush, I bet. Right, let's look. He was near this holly bush. Yes, I found one. Look, here's the other one. You are right, Peter. We've explained everything now. The cap, the bit of wool, the stilts. I think the Secret Seven have been very clever. And so do I. Inspector, did you hear all that? Yes. It was me in that car. When John and I saw you racing off, we knew you must be hot on the scent. Well, I suppose you can't tell me who the thief is, can you? I think it's a stilt walker called Louis. If you go to the circus, you'll probably find him wearing blue socks with a red pattern. And will have black hair with a little round board patch. Ah, it's astonishing how much you know. What about coming along to find him now? I've got a couple of men in the car. We can meet you there. The police got there first, of course, in their car. But they waited for the children to come. Peter spotted Louis by the lion's cage and pointed him out to the inspector. Louis stood up as they came near. You, got any socks on? No, I haven't. Tell him to bend over. Bend over. What? Do it. Yes, that's him all right. See the bald patch? Good. Now, young fella, where are the pearls? What pearls? I don't know anything about no pearls. Oh, yes, you do. You left stilt marks behind you, and this cap, and this bit of wool from the socks you were seen wearing last night. Now, where are those pearls? Find them yourself. Maybe my brother's gone off with them in the caravan. But he said he was leaving the pearls here. I was in the caravan and heard him say so. How did he...? And you said the pearls would be safe with the lions. Which of you people is the lion tamer? I am. What's your name? Ricardo. Why? We have reason to believe there's a pearl necklace hidden in the cage. What? Go in and search. Under loose boards, anywhere. All right. See, Inspector. No loose boards. Nowhere to hide pearls. Peter, Louis is looking hard at the water trough. Tell him to examine the water trough, Inspector. You heard the boy, Ricardo. Go ahead, empty out the water. Nothing in here. Turn it upside down. It has a false bottom soldered to it. Uh, pass me a screwdriver. Now, I will lever it up. There. The pearls! Very satisfactory. Right, you two men. Arrest that man. And now, Secret Seven, we'll all go and see Lady Lucy Thomas. 
I'm sure she'll want to reward you, so I hope you have some good ideas, eh? What do you want, Janet? I suppose she wouldn't give me a little bear, would she? Like this one here. Pam would like one too. <laughs> well, Secret Seven, ask for anything you like. You deserve it. I don't know what I should do without your help. You'll help me again in the future, won't you? Oh, yes! yes. 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 And you may be sure they will.